Hi, welcome back to recitation. In lecture, you discussed the, some of the inverse trigonometric functions as part of your discussion of inverse functions in general and implicit differentiation. And I just wanted to talk about one briefly that you didn't uh, mention in lecture, as, as far as I recall, which is the inverse cosine, so what, what I'm going to call the arc cosine function. Um, so I just wanted to go briefly through its graph and its derivative. So here I have the graph of the curve y equals cosine x. So this is a, you know, uh, you, you should have seen this before, I hope. So it has, at, at x equals 0, it has its maximum value 1. And then to the right, it goes down. Its, zero, its first 0 is at pi over 2. And then it has its, its trough at, at x equals pi. And then it goes back up again. And OK, and it's an even function. It looks the same to the right and the left of the, of the y-axis. And it's periodic with period 2 pi. And it's also you know, what you get by shifting the sine function to the, to the, le the graph of the sine function to the left by pi over 2. So OK, so, so this is y equals cosine x. So in order to, com to, to graph y equals arc cosine of x, we do what we do for every inverse function, which is we just take the graph and we reflect it across the line y equals x. So I've done that over here. So this is the, the, what we get when we reflect this curve, the, the y equals cosine x curve, when we reflect it through that diagonal line y equals x. Um, so one thing you'll notice about this is that it's not a function, right? The, 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 this curve is not the graph of a function because every, all these, humps on cosine x, you know, there are more humps out here, those horizontal lines cut the humps in many points. And when you reflect, you get vertical lines that, that cut this curve in many points. So it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So in order to get a function out of this, what we have to do is we, we, we just have to take a, a, a chunk of this curve that does pass the vertical line test. And so there are many, many ways we could do this. And we choose one basically arbitrarily meaning we could make a different choice, and we could do all of our trigonometry around some other choice, but it's convenient to just choose one, and if everyone agrees that that's what that one is, then we can use it, and, it, and, it, and it's nice. We have a function, and we can, the other ones are, are you know, all closely related to this one choice that we can make. So in particular here, I think there's an easiest choice, um, which is we, we take the curve y equals arc cosine x to be just this one piece of the arc here. So this has maximum. So it, it goes from x equals minus 1 to x equals 1. And when x is minus 1, we have y is pi. And then when x equals 1, y is 0. So this is the, this curve is the, the graph of the function y equals arc cosine of x. And if you want, so there's, there's a notation that mathematicians use sometimes to, to, to show that we're talking about, oh, the particular arc cosine function that has this as its domain and this as its range. So we sometimes write arc cosine, and it takes as its domain the values between 1 and 1, and it spits out values between 0 and pi. So this is a sort of fancy notation that mathematicians use to say the arc cosine function takes values in the interval minus 1, 1. So it takes values between negative 1 and 1. And it spits out values in the interval 0, pi. So, so every value that it spits out is between 0 and pi. OK, so if you graph. The, the function. So now this is a proper function, right? It's, a, it's single valued. It passes the vertical line test. Um, so OK. And so that's the, the graph of y equals arc cosine of x. Um, so the other, the other thing that we did in lecture, I think we talked about arc sine, and we graphed it, and we talked about arc tan, and we graphed it, and we also computed their derivatives. So let's, let's do that for the arc cosine as well. So what have we got? Well, so. In order to compute the derivative, this, this function is defined as an inverse function. So we do the same thing that we did in lecture, which is we use this trick from implicit differentiation. So in particular, we have that if y is equal to arc cosine of x, 
then we can take the cosine of both sides. And cosine of arc cosine, since we've chosen it as an inverse function, uh, that just gives us back S, x. So we get cosine of y is equal to x. And now we can differentiate. So what we're after is the derivative of arc cosine of x. So we're after dy dx. So we differentiate this through with respect to x. So on the right-hand side, we just get 1. And on the left-hand side, well, we have a, a chain rule here, right? Because we have cosine of y, and y is a function of x. So this is, so the derivative of cosine is minus sine y. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of y, which is dy dx. Now, dy dx is the thing we're, we're after. So we solve this equation for dy dx, and we get dy dx is equal to minus 1 divided by sine y. OK, which is fine. This is a nice, a nice formula. But what we'd really like, ideally, is to express this back in terms of x. And so we can, well, we can, we can substitute, right? We have, we have an expression for y in terms of x. So that's y is equal to arc cosine of x. So this is equal to minus. 1 divided by sine of arc cosine of x. Now, this looks really ugly. And here, this is another place where we could stop. But actually, it turns out that because trigonometric functions are, are nicely behaved, we can, we can make this, this nicer. So, um, so I'm going to appeal here to the case where x is uh, between 0 and 1. So then, then x, then, then we have a, a, a right triangle that we can draw. In the other case, you can do a similar argument with the unit circle, but, but the, I'll just do this, this one case. So if, OK, so arc cosine of x, what does that mean? That is the angle whose cosine is x, right? So if you draw a right triangle, And you make this angle arc two c's arc cosine of x. Well, that angle has cosine equal to x. So this is the right triangle. So it's adjacent side over the hypotenuse is equal to x. And one easy way to, to get that arrangement of things is say is if this side is x and this side is one. So OK, so, so what? Well, why do I care? Because I, because I need sine of that angle. So this is the angle arc cosine of x. So sine of that angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And what's the opposite side? Well, I can use the Pythagorean theorem here. And the opposite side is square root of 1 minus x squared. That's the length of the opposite side. So the sine of arc cosine of x is square root of 1 minus x squared divided by 1. So sine of arc cosine of x is just square root of 1 minus x squared. So we can write this in the somewhat nicer form of minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if you remember what the derivative of arc sine of x was, you'll notice that this is a very similar looking function. And this is just because cosine and sine are very similar looking functions. So um, in fact, the, the graph of arc cosine is just a reflection of the graph of arc sine. Um, and, and that's why the, the derivatives are, are so closely related to each other. So OK, so there you go. You've got the graph of arc cosine up there. And you've got the formula for its derivative. So that, that sort of completes the tour of the, the most important inverse trigonometric functions. Uh, so I think I'll end there. <laughs>